Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. We are starting the weekend off right. Everything you see here is for sale. In the description, names, references, and prices when available. For additional prices, reach out to me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. I have all of the answers, plus extra photos, boxes, papers, and accessory set information. I'm always looking to build inventory. If you want to sell a watch or an entire collection, reach out to me at the same address. One watch, the full collection, or maybe a trade. We pay cash, we pay fast, we make it easy. To buy, sell, or trade, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Okay, I'm going to try to jump straight in with the thumbnail watch. You've asked for this, and now I have answered. We're going to lead off with the thumbnail watch every time. This watch was new for 2020. Not the Sky Dweller, but the Sky Dweller on the Oysterflex strap bracelet. So reference 326235 in Ever Rose Rose Gold, 42 millimeters. This might be the most capable watch on the show today. It's 100 meters water resistant, a chronometer, automatic, fully loomed, an annual calendar, a GMT, and it has a three-day power reserve. A feature introduced on the 42 millimeter white gold yacht master, a sort of glide lock light, as we've got here, six two millimeter increments. This is not easy link. This is just like you'll see on a Rolex dive watch, you've got a gliding incremental adjustment, so it's easier to find a precise fit with the uncuttable Oysterflex strap bracelet, which is, of course, internally a titanium nickel alloy. On the wrist, it wears well. Even though my wrist is small, the fact that there are no longer solid end links means that this watch wears even better than in its original variant. We'll zoom out a little bit. You can get a better sense of it in proportion. It's a great-looking watch and a very clever thing, as you can set it using a combination of the bezel and the crown, and I'll demonstrate that real quick. The crown screws out. Initially, you wind it, but in the action position, nothing happens. One click counterclockwise. Now, note I can move the annual calendar system, both the month and the date, forward and backwards. It's bi-directional. So 12 hours, 12 months. This corresponds to, as you can see, the first month of the year and one. So that is January 1st. And now you can see it's January 2nd. We can go back. We can take a look at December. All of that's possible. But note the watch continues to tick. Now, one more click and I can set the local time. Note I can't drive the date backwards here, but I can set the local time, including driving the date. One more click counterclockwise. Now hacking seconds is activated and I can move everything in sync. And of course the watch is very, very well loomed with this post 2017 variant of the Sky Dweller dial. Let's do a quick loom shot. As you can see, Rolex's signature chromolite blue loom, but we're not done with chromolite. We're not done with Rolex. Can you guess? I think you might. That's right. It's the original black and blue. The original Batman is launched at Basel World 2013. This is the 116710 BLNR. I don't think anyone realized what a sensation this watch would become, but it was at the time a little bit of a trailblazer. The first ever black and blue bezel Rolex GMT Master II. 100 meters water resistant, well loomed, automatic winding, a chronometer, highly anti-magnetic, and thanks to the bi-directional rotating uh, ceramic capped bezel, you can temporarily read three time zones here. You also have that lovely blue lacquered 24 hour hand, and the time zones, of course, being read in triplicate, provided you set that 24 hour hand to Greenwich Mean Time. Then you have your local time, Greenwich Mean Time, and you could use the airport or port offset at your destination to find the local time using the bezel. That's how that three time zone system works. Once again, we're not done. But here you can see pre chromolite a 36 millimeter Rolex Oyster Perpetual. This is the 116000, the classic Rolex Oyster Perpetual with the classic size and an Explorer dial. This is a evergreen look. The original Oyster case directly descended from the 1933 Oyster Perpetual, the first watch that combined Rolex's Oyster water resistant case with the Perpetual rotor automatic winding system. And it remains capable to this day. 48 hour power reserve, chronometer certified, highly anti-magnetic, shock resistant, 100 meters water resistant, and a viable unisex option as you can easily wear the direct descendant of the old Rolex bubble back on a large male wrist or a petite female wrist. It looks good on both. And again, it is very traditional core Rolex. We're not quite done here as we have a watch that represents the only rival to the Sky Dweller for the title of most versatile on today's show. I'm going to give it a nice polish here with the microfiber. And by the way, it's retro today as I have my old watch you want polishing cloth. 
Now, this is the Blancpain GMT Revi. It is a GMT, it is an alarm, and it has a couple of unique features. First, there's an on-off function for the alarm, which you can see up at about 1230. There's also an alarm power reserve indicator, and the watch has the unique capability, I'm not, not unique, but almost unique, very rare capability of being able to automatically wind the time-telling functions as well as the alarm. So it can automatically wind its own alarm. What I'll do here, is I will try to set this so that we have the same time for the alarm and the time of day. And you can see it has a black polished striker like a minute repeater on the reverse side. And that's the on-off function. It is incredibly well loomed. As you can see, even many of the subsidiary dials are loomed here. Now you've got your power reserve for the alarm, you're on off for the alarm, you've got your second time zone in 24 hour format, constant seconds, your date, your alarm time set, and then of course your local time at center. All of this with screw down crowns, 40 millimeters in titanium and 100 meters water resistant. So very, very versatile. Probably the ultimate travel watch and quite handsome as all the features of the dials are applique here. Throwing it on the wrist, it has a rubberized leather strap, which is wonderfully rich. A p little bit of opulence, reminding you that Blancpain is one of the flagship brands of the Swatch Group. And all in satin, gold and titanium, it has a lovely soft glow on the wrist. Flipping it over, caliber 1241 is a movement released in the early 2000s that remains one of the best looking alarms in the business. Mile wide, Cote de Genève, mirrored anglage, likewise extremely broad and easy to see. We have both black polished and fired blued screws here, and then we have engine turning on the base plate with satination on the wheels. All of it quite good looking, automatic winding with a 40 hour power reserve. And I think the real highlight here, the sheer width of the Geneva waves and the fact that the anglage is so wonderfully broad on every surface. A very special watch with a full rose gold deployant clasp. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more establishment and even a little bit more upmarket, we have here Patek Philippe Nautilus 5726A. This is the annual calendar gray dial. As you can see, alligator leather strap, 40.5 millimeters in stainless steel. There is a rubber strap you can get from Patek that looks just like the leather, but allows you to take full advantage of this watch's 120 meter water resistance. It's an aperture style annual calendar. So you have your date, you have your day, you have your month, and then you have a radial indicator of, for the 24 hours of the day. So you know when not to try to use the pusher adjusters to adjust the calendar. And then inside of that, there's a moon phase. Good looking caliber, it's a 324 base. So silicon hairspring, anti-magnetic, free sprung, automatic winding, 45 hour power reserve, and an annual calendar, which means you only have to reset the calendar once a year annually during the jump from February to March. It looks good on a broad range of wrists as it's not too large, nor is it too thick. It's a versatile timepiece that's a good size for modern men's complication, a sports watch and a dress watch both. It could pull double duty and easily be your only watch if you wanted to go big for one fine piece to last you a lifetime. The finishing on the movement is what you would expect of Patek Philippe and as you can see, the timepiece is quite well loomed at night, so very versatile. Jumping into the world of my favorite brand, the Maison de Bethune, of course, out of Lauberson, Switzerland, since 2002. They've built fewer than 3,000 watches, currently building about 150 a year. Denis Flageolet, the watchmaker who oversees de Bethune's technological development and product design, is a genius, and he is one of the best watchmakers in the world, and perhaps the most under-recognized. What you see right here is the DB25 perpetual calendar with a lovely brown bronze dial, and you can see it has lovely depth to it and a rosette-style guilloche out of the center. De Bethune is heavily invested in vertical integration, making its own dials right down to the guilloche, or when necessary, engraving. They do that in-house too. They make their own cases and they make their own movements. And here you can see the perpetual calendar powered by a version of the 2024 automatic. So at center we have a shock protection system that's patented so that the rotor is well braced and you can have a huge effective lever arm to maximize the mechanical advantage of the winding system, which uses a fired blue titanium arm and then a platinum mass. 
automatic winding five day power reserve one two three shock protection springs over the balance and if you look carefully you can see that the balance is non-annular it's actually a yoke so you have platinum masses and then a fired blue titanium wheel itself the hairspring two pieces shaped by hand clamped together giving you the concentric breathing properties of an overcoil but with the durability and the low profile the flatness of a flat hairspring all of this nicely decorated with twin mainspring barrels automatic winding and a proprietary silicon escape wheel for low friction the moon phase as you can see is spherical one half blackened one half white palladium and then you have an aperture style perpetual calendar with the day the month radial date 24 hour indicator and of course you've got that moon phase a very very special watch 44 millimeters but quite thin as you can see it sits nicely on my wrist and i could recommend it for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference that said if you need something a little bit more compact from Debitune, launched in 2020, this is the DB28 Starry Sky, DB28 XP Starry Sky, to be correct and precise. The XP meaning it is thinner. I measure it at 8.6 millimeters thick in grade 5 titanium. It is 43 millimeters in diameter, and as you can see, it is all grade 5 titanium. So not only is it lighter than steel, it's also harder and more scratch resistant than steel. The dial uses Debitune's proprietary micro light engraving, so sometimes they don't want to go with a rosette or a straight line style guilloche and this is a much more contemporary look as you can see the graining of the grooves is an arc across the dial all of this is fired blue using a blue firing of titanium technique that Debitune has patented and then little cabochon of white gold are inserted into drilled slots in the dial to create the image of the cosmos we have modified polished delta style hands in rose gold we have a black polished base underpinning and reflecting the bottom of another Debitune balance design. This is their 2016 balance design with white gold masses and a full titanium wheel. If you wonder why all these different balance designs, it's because Denis is constantly trying to improve the performance of the balance, moving more mass to the outer periphery and reducing its reaction to hot and cold it's it's thermal coefficients so that's the goal right there and you can also see that we have a full black polished bridge for the balance we have the hairspring i mentioned before as well as the silicon escape wheel and inside this incredibly thin case we have a manual wind six day power reserve along with the db28's signature floating lugs this watch came out last year to celebrate 10 years of the db28 the model that won the gphg Aiguidor at the 2011 Grand Prix de Logerie de Genève, which is the Oscars of watchmaking. So this is a lauded and awarded model line. A lot of folks say if you're going to buy just one Debitune, get a DB28. It is to Debitune what the Tourbillon Remontoir or Tourbillon Souverain is to F.P. Journe. It's core to the identity of the brand, not just the model line. Now, my life in the luxury watch world started with Jeger Lecoult, and of course, back in 2011, JLC launched the Tribute to Deep Sea. It is part of their Memovox families of alarms, and it harks back to the late 1950s E857 Deep Sea Alarm, which was JLC's first dive watch, the idea being that rather than using a timing bezel to time your dive, you would alert yourself using an alarm. This was also a remarkable application of a vintage alarm effect. It has a cricket-like hum with an internal resonator chamber designed to make it more audible underwater than above. But when it's on your wrist, it vibrates intensely so you know it's going off. Now, of course, there are two different versions of this watch. Both of them are 40.6 millimeters in steel, just a little bit bigger than the original by about a millimeter. And as you can see, this was the smaller scale American dial version. From the 1930s through about 1983, all American bound JLC watches were branded Le Coult. And of course, back in the late 1950s, the American market would have received the 857 with Le Coult dial, which would have meant that was the more numerous of the original. Well, for the re-edition, the tribute, we actually have 359 with the American dial and 959 with the Jager Le Coult branded European dial. So this is the scarcer of the two tribute models. 
As you can see, it is brightly and nostalgically loomed, and you can actually set the alarm and read the alarm position at night as the index on the dial is loomed. The watch is automatic winding, 100 meters water resistant, and as you can see, it comes with a plexiglass crystal, and the watch is actually packaged with a replacement plexiglass crystal, so you get two when you buy the watch. It's easy to wear because at about 40.6 millimeters, it's not a large timepiece. It is very much a sports watch and still very swimmable, and though the alarm isn't particularly vocal, on the wrist, its effect is unmistakable. You will not miss it. This is the tribute to Deep Sea, and you can see it has the original image of the skin diver on the reverse side, a very special modern day JLC watch. If you want the three big re-editions from JLC, you want to get the Tribute to Polaris, the Tribute to Deep Sea, and the Tribute to Geophysic, and that would be the trilogy of modern JLC nostalgic re-editions, the three best retro watches that JLC has done, and this was the middle child of that set. Jumping back into the world of independent brands, here we have a watch made in only 10 copies. Now, normally when you see the black dial in the rose gold case, you know you're looking at an FP Journe boutique edition, but this is scarcer still. This is the Okta UTC. It has a 120 hour chronometric power reserve during which it will keep good time, but its absolute power reserve is almost seven days, 160 hours. It's 40 millimeters in rose gold. And if you look carefully, you can see it has a matte blue dial rather than the conventional boutique black. So only 10 pieces were made as you see right here. You'll appreciate that it does feature multiple time zones and a plus minus one adjustment that allows you to toggle to account for summertime and wintertime in locations that use summer and winter alternate timing. So it's an unusual dual time watch in that regard. And then you can see coaxial with the 12 hours of the day. We have raised individual numerals for the 24 hour second time zone that sits coaxial with the two blued hands. So you have the rose gold hand that represents the reference time. Turn it all over and you can see that inside it's pink on pink. We have a solid gold movement. Bridges and plates both 18 karat nicely decorated with a 22 karat mask cut using a rose lay that is the guilloche grand d'orge or barley corn. So with a rose gold movement inside a rose gold case, though it's only a 40 millimeter watch, it does feel much more substantial and heftier. You can see despite the day low color of this strap. It is an FP Journe factory strap, so you get all of the toys, including the pull tab spring bar, alligator on both sides, and of course it's strapped with a full rose gold pin buckle made by Journe. Journe making dials, cases, and movements, as with De Betun, you know that there's a lot of integrity to the brand because FP Journe only makes watches that he would like to own, and then he puts all the money back into the company to build a better product. And while I tend to prefer the way Denis does things, FP Journe is a modern day legend and probably the most prominent, well-known, and certainly most awarded watchmaker of our era. And the UTC was his take on a travel time watch. And that's exactly what we have right here. Blue dial, rose gold case, 40 millimeters, only 10 pieces. Okay. Let's peg back the high horology for a moment and talk about luxury horology. This is a great example of a watch that represents a core model from one of the Grand Maisons of Swiss watchmaking from IWC in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, the German Swiss. Here we have the IWC Pilot's Watch Chronograph Spitfire. This reference, which is known as the 387902, is 42 millimeters in diameter with a bronze case. And inside, it has a 69,000 series chronograph, 46 hour power reserve, column wheel actuation. So this is not a Valjoux 7750. And if you take a quick look, you can see that the dial is a lovely green olive drab, military inspired with the instrument style, first coined on IWC Mark series watches and the B-Ur. So this is a very IWC, IWC, super legible, nicely executed. It features a 60 meter water resistance with the screw down crown, which does make it surface swimmable. You can see the straps, a combination of leather and then a military style olive drab green textile with a gusset sewn in to prevent gouging of the strap. Taking a quick look, we have a matching bronze pin buckle. And on the reverse side, you can see why the watch is called the Spitfire. It's from the Spitfire collection, first launched in, I believe, in 2003. The Spitfires have been slightly more upscale and ornate versions of standard IWC pilots watches. And of course, they are inspired by the British supermarine Spitfire, the elliptical wing Merlin engined 
fighter craft that you see on the reverse of this case. The case back is titanium. The case itself is bronze. The action of the column wheel is very precise and crisp, so it is a pleasant and pleasing chronograph to operate. And of course, it's a large watch at 42, but it's not a huge watch, which makes it a lot more viable than many IWC timepieces on a normal-sized wrist. Once again, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. Let's do a quick loom shot here. The watch is well loomed, much like the big pilot's watch. It's loomed at the four corners. You have that little bit of, I think it's called parapoidia, up at, or excuse me, paradolia, up at the top of the dial. So it looks like a little face. That's the paradolia phenomenon on some watches. And you get that at the index at 12 o'clock. I believe parapoidia is a microorganism. This is paradolia. And as you can see, it has a little bit of a variation of loom as the hands themselves are conventional loom, but we get a more bronzed ecru simulated patina for the actual quarters themselves. And of course, there's a double quick set for the day and the date. I've always said that H. Moser and C is the German Swiss F.P. Journe, and watches like this Endeavor Perpetual Cosmic Green really compound the notion. They do things differently. They're into advanced and unusual engineering solutions, and they have a strong sense of aesthetics and design. Plus, with Journe making about 950 watches a year and Moser making about 1,500, they're not all that far apart in terms of volume. Now, the watch you see here is a 50-piece limited edition. It is an exquisite machine, as you can see, white gold, Manual wind, seven-day power reserve, perpetual calendar. This is what they call their purity dial. It has indices only, no additional print or markings. And it's a fume dial, which means it starts light at the center and darkens at its edge. This color is what they call cosmic green, and I'll demonstrate here how the system works. So we have a perpetual calendar designed by independent watchmaking great Andreas Streller. And note, it's bi-directional. I can turn it in both directions. We have 12 months corresponding to 12 hours of the day, so you have a little stick index that allows you to see the current month, and then you have the ability to adjust the calendar in both directions, and you cannot generally do that with perpetual calendars. Now, when you pull the crown out all the way, you engage hacking or stop seconds, and there's a power reserve indicator over at nine o'clock. The watch is seven day rated, power reserve, but in fact, it will run for almost nine days. And you can see the movement is nicely done. HMC 800. Streller understood when he designed this system that you do not need to see the leap year, but once every four years. So we put the leap year cycle indicator on the reverse of the watch. There's a little bit of old school watchmaking as the overcoil hairspring is made by hand and the balance beats way to slow and stately pocket watch inspired 18,000 vibrations per hour. The bridges are not three quarter because you can see they're split for easier maintenance, but they are three quarter in profile. They resemble the three quarter bridges of old 19th century Moser pocket watches and so too do the golden chaton holding the arbors for the two mainspring barrels. You can see these chaton are used as the jewel settings then fixed by black polished screws. That's another nod to the pocket watch era. There's a full balance bridge with a free sprung index for toughness and then a solid gold escapement that reduces friction and improves power reserve. The watch has a feature rarely seen on Moser watches and that is a full deployant clasp to guard against accidental droppage. That is a very nice refinement to have something that sets this apart from most Moser watches. 42 millimeters in diameter, the case is slim and you can see beautifully sculpted. The bezel, which is concave all the way around, swells at 12 o'clock and at six o'clock, appearing almost as though it were molten metal drawn out and flash frozen. The Moser cases are always machined and then hand finished, which is how they can get these deep wells in the flanks of the lugs, which are then polished by hand. You can't do that. You can't create this three-dimensional sculpting when you're simply stamping cases like most brands are. And then there's an unconventional vertical satin finish along the case band. The watch wears well. As you can see on the reverse side, the sapphire on the case back is curved, which is expensive to make and also difficult to properly install, so no expenses were spared here. The lugs are short and downturn rather dramatically, so even on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, this watch wears really nicely. It's a good fit. I can recommend it for a wrist as small as, I would even say, 14 centimeters circumference. It's so narrow across the wrist and it's so flat. It'll fit underneath the cuff and it'll fit a smaller wrist. And this might be my favorite version of the Endeavor Perpetual, a really cool signature complication for Moser and one of their core models, the Endeavor, which is 
more than the pioneer, more than the venturer, more than the streamliner, the model that really lies at the heart and soul of what the Moser design aesthetic is all about. And you get that right here with the Endeavor Perpetual. Going a little bit upscale, but sticking with our independence, we have a watch made in 11 pieces in stainless steel, launched in 2016. This is the Grubel 4C Signature 1. Didier Cretin, who is a high-level watchmaker, long a member of the Grubel 4C watchmaking crew, he was allowed to take the resources of the company and adhere to the standards of the company, but build a watch that was the realization of his own vision for the perfect dress timepiece. And he built this Signature 1, all steel, 41.4 millimeters in diameter, so nicely sized for a Grubel. It's pretty thin as well, and I can wear it quite easily on my wrist. Normally, Grubel watches are huge. This one is not. It, it's not excessively broad across the wrist, excessive in diameter, nor is it terribly thick. You can wear this as easily as you can wear a standard 40 millimeter FP Journe, but with Grubel 4C finishing standards, it is admittedly much better finished than a Journe. Now, the entire movement is gilded, which is lovely, giving that rose gold tint, and then we have a solid gold dial cut from a blank of gold and then galvanized black. You can see that the balance bridge takes pride of place. It is enormous, anchored on both sides by columns that are black polished and screws that are black polished. You can see the entire top of that bridge has been black polished with a specular finish. The same has been rendered on the side with the anglage a mile wide. And if you look at the edges, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sharp interior angles where the two polished bevels meet. We have a overcoil made by hand. We have a free sprung balance adjusted in six positions, and you can see that the balance is enormous at over 12 millimeters in diameter, and it has recessed white gold bolts to pull the bolts out of the free airstream and reduce the effect of aerodynamics or aerodynamic drag on the timing. It beats away at an aesthetically pleasing and traditional 18,000 vibrations per hour and you can see the escapement is visible on the dial side to the left of the balance. We also have bridges that are polished in extravagant fashion on their edge and then blazoned with lovely and mile-wide, handsomely gradiated Cote de Genève. Turn it all over, you can see there's even more to love as we have a finger-style train leading down from the barrel, and the entire bridge underpinning the barrel, as well as the click mechanism for retaining it, has been, again, black polished and finished off with diamond paste. This is extraordinarily difficult to do. We use nickel copper zinc for the bridges and plates. That's known as Maisho. In Alanga, it would be called German silver, but it's not silver. It's nickel, it's copper, it's zinc. And you can see on the reverse side just how broad those bevels are. You can see more of those interior angles where two bevels meet in a sharp cleft line. Plus, you can see that the drivetrain, all the wheels, including the barrel, fit in golden chiton, another nod to the pocket watch heritage of La Chaux de Fonds, where Grubel 4C is located. Grubel 4C with about 100 employees, making about 100 watches a year. So one employee to one watch, probably the lowest ratio of watches to employees in the business. And this degree of finishing is the reason why. They go above and beyond doing things that even Geneva Hallmark movements don't feature, such as the use of beveling of the interior circumference as well as the spokes of their wheels, creating sharp interior angles where the spoke meets the rim every single time the spoke meets the rim, and then satinating the wheels. And I believe they use either acid or a wire brush to satinate and create this sharp graining, much like sandpaper across their bridges and plates. Everything about this watch exhausts superlatives. Everything except the size, which is very wearable. If you love Grubel's uncompromising standards, but you can't bear to wear a double or quadruple tourbillon the size of a fist, this is the way to get into Grubel 4C watchmaking. Finally, we end not with an independent, but with a superb product from one of the great group brands in the business. Launched in 2006, this is the Elango Unzona Datagraph Perpetual. So the watch is about, it's, it's 40.9 millimeters in platinum. So think of it as 41 millimeters in diameter. The dial is gray galvanized, but the dial is actually made of sterling silver. Like a silver dollar, that's what the dial is made of. The indices, the hands, the frame for the date, and the... Roman numerals are all white gold, and then the moon phase disc, and this is universal on longer watches, is made of solid gold. Now, as you can see, it is a flyback chronograph. You reset it, you restart it with one push of the trigger. It is also a perpetual calendar, meaning it can deal with leap years, irregular length months. It makes all of those adjustments. Now, you can see, as I adjust the watch, there is an AM-PM indicator at 9 o'clock that lets you know whether you're looking at, for example, 
12 noon during the day, which we are right now, or a time in the evening, and that corresponds to the open and bounded sides of that AM PM indicator. But what really stands out on this watch is a methodology devised by Longa watchmakers that allows you to make quick adjustments if the watch should fall a few days behind. You pull the crown out, and then you adjust using the pusher adjuster, and the crown has to be out for this to work. You can see everything adjusts in sync, the day, the date, the month, the leap year. So if you fall three days behind, pull out the crown after setting the time, and then just toggle until you reach the current day. It is a beautiful coordinated system that makes it easier to live with a perpetual calendar. As you can see, though it is a dress watch, it's a sporty dress watch, as it features a tachymeter scale for gauging speed, a loomed dial, and a flyback chronograph generally used to gauge times within sports that require rapid timing between events, such as two runners passing the start-finish of a track or two race cars around a course being timed against the same reference point. As you can see, the dial has phenomenal depth to it, and then we turn it over and things get even better. It's the caliber L952, related to the Datagraph caliber that came out in 1999 and reportedly shocked Patek Philippe, you can see it is a lateral clutch column wheel chronograph, slow beating 18K, it has an overcoil hairspring, five position adjustment, it is a free sprung balance, it does feature hacking or stop seconds, and it has a lovely lateral clutch, all the chronograph components here you can see are silver because they're made of steel, quite a few black polished components here, we have both black polished screws, and then we have fired blued screws. It includes both. German silver, that material I told you about here, nickel, copper, zinc, but unplated, so you can see the copper giving it that golden hue. And a freehand engraved balance cock with a black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism. Now take a quick look at the clutch assembly for the chronograph. Note how many sharp exterior angles and interior angles there are just on that one component. And then take a look from an angle. I'm sorry, it's got a case back sticker on it. I'll let you remove that when you buy the watch. But it has such depth to it, and that's a rare thing. Even in complicated watchmaking, where a lot of movements tend to be flat and dense, this one's open, airy, and three-dimensional. And you can see it has mirrored anglage, not just on the bridges, but also on the steel components of the chronograph, basically as good as it gets with a feature that is not universal to datagraph perpetuals. Here we have a full, pardon me, this is a white gold clasp right here. And as you can see, it is a platinum watch with a white gold clasp, which is the option that was ordered. And you can actually see that the white gold is a little bit warmer than the platinum. If you've ever wondered about the difference between platinum and white gold, there it is right there. You can see the white gold is warmer, a little bit darker, and then the platinum is just blindingly silver white. So a lot to love here. This watch originally would have come with a pin buckle, so getting it on the full deployment clasp not only adds more inherent value and heft to the watch, which I like, but it also helps guard against accidentally dropping the thing when you take it off at night or put it on in the morning. And it's a beautiful watch, though it's big, it's not huge, and you could wear it on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters. You can see on my wrist, it hardly swallows my forearm. So this is a great option for those who want something that's got a substantial size and weight, but isn't ungainly or huge. And of course, being a datograph, it's one of the great column wheel chronographs in the business with pusher feel that's a little bit of heaven. Remember, if you like this or any watch you see on the show, reach out to me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Time out, Tim out. Thanks for logging on.